Welcome to Prejim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 10 of ADO.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about the SQL data adapter and data set objects. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch part 7, 8 and 9 of this video series. In the previous sessions of this ADO.NET video series, we have learned about SQL Data Reader object. SQL Data Reader is connection oriented, meaning it requires an active and open connection to the database while it fetches the data from the database. Whereas SQL Data Adapter and Data Set provides us with a disconnected data access model. In this session, we'll learn about SQL Data Adapter and Data Set objects. In a later video session, we will discuss about where actually this disconnected data access model can be used. Now if you remember, in part 4 of this video series, we have discussed about the SQL command object. When we create an instance of the SQL command object, we need to pass in two parameters to the constructor. One is the command that we want to execute and the other one is the connection upon which we want to execute that SQL command. Along the same lines, when we actually create an instance of a SQL data adapter, we need to specify the command that we want to execute and the connection upon which we want to execute that command. Let's look at a demo. In the sample database, I have this table TBL product inventory which has got the sample data and now I want to display this data within an ASP.NET web application. We have seen how to do this in the past using SQL command and SQL data reader objects. In this session, we'll see how to achieve the same using SQL data adapter and data set objects. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have a simple ASP.NET web application project which has got this webform1.aspx. Let's drag and drop the grid view control, which can be found under the data tab in the toolbox. Let's auto format that. Okay, so we have this grid view control. Let's flip to the code behind file. So in the page load, let's write the code to load the data from SQL Server and display that in the grid view control. First of all, we need to have the connection string to the database. I have the connection string within my web.config file. The name of the connection string is dbcs. So the data source is dot, which means the local SQL Server. The name of the database is sample. Integrated security is equal to SSPI, meaning I am using Windows authentication with the SQL Server database. And the provider is system.data SQL client because I am interacting with Microsoft SQL Server database. So let's go ahead and create a SQL connection object but before that we need to uh, specify the connection string and we know that we have the connection string in web.config file so I have to read it from there and to do that I can make use of the configuration manager class. We have spoken about all these steps in the previous sessions of this video series. So configuration manager dot connection strings off, we need to specify the name of the connection string. So let's copy it from web.config file, paste it here, dot connection string. So we get the connection string. Now we need to create a SQL connection object. So SQL connection con is equal to new SQL connection and the constructor expects the connection string to be passed in. We already have the connection string. So let's pass that to the constructor of SQL connection class. Okay, now if you want your connection to be closed in a timely fashion, you can either do that in a finally block or we can use the using block which ensures that the connection is automatically closed when the connection object goes out of scope. We don't have to explicitly call the close method on the connection object. Alright, so we have the connection object ready. Now what we need to do is to prepare the SQL command. but in the previous sessions, we have seen how to use the SQL command and SQL data reader. In this session, we are going to use SQL data adapter. And if you remember, when we create an instance of the SQL command object, it expects, if you look at the SQL command, when I create an instance of this one, if you look at this, there is a constructor which takes two parameters, uh, the command that we want to execute and the connection upon which we want to execute that command. Now, when I create an instance of the SQL data adapter, let's call this DA is equal to new SQL data adapter. I have one overloaded version of the constructor of this class which takes in the command that we want to execute and the connection upon which we want to execute that. So it's exactly similar to the way we create a SQL command object. Okay, so let's specify the command. The command that I want to execute is this one. 
So let's copy that. And the connection upon which I want to execute this data adapter, I mean this command, is con. Okay, so I have the data adapter. Now, we need to create an instance of data set object. We will talk about data, you know, working with data or set object in detail in the next video session. Here, let me introduce you to data set. And by the way, data set is independent of the provider. So it's not present in system.data.sql client namespace. It's present in a namespace called using system.data that is common to all the providers, all the .NET data providers, you know, our .NET data provider for SQL Server, which is system.data.sql client, .NET uh, data provider for Oracle, which is system.data. Oracle client makes along the same lines OLEDB and ODBC.NET data providers. You know, the provider specific classes, we know that they are present in that provider specific namespace, but the data set is provider independent. That's why it's present in the system.data namespace. Okay, so data set, let's call this DS is equal to new data set. So we are creating an instance of the data set. Now, if you're wondering what a data set is, a data set is an in-memory representation of your database. We can, we can treat it like that. A data set can actually store tables and the relationships between them, just like how a database would store tables and the relationships between them. But the database tables are actually stored in the hard disk, whereas this data set is present in the memory of the web server. And if you want, you can cache that, which we will actually look at in the next video session. Okay, so for now, understand data set as an in-memory representation of your tables. Okay, so now we have the data adapter and the data set, which is capable of storing uh, tables in memory for us. Okay, so now I want to, you know, fill this data set with data from this TBL inventory, uh, TBL product inventory table. And to do that, all I'm specific, all I'm doing here is on the data adapter object, I'm going to call a method called fill method. Now, most of the work is actually done by this fill method. Now, if you look at this fill method, it is expecting a data set to be passed in as a parameter. So I'm going to pass this data set to that method. So now what is this method actually doing? This method is the one which actually opens the connection to the database. Previously, when we were using the SQL command and SQL data reader objects, we were required to open the connection before we execute the command. Okay, but for data adapter, we don't have to do that. Okay, all you have to do is call the fill method. The fill method will take care of opening the connection, executing the command on the SQL Server database, you know, reads the data and then fills that within the data set and closes the connection immediately. So the connection opening and closing is managed by the data adapter for us. We don't have to open the connection, nor do we have to close it. Okay, that's automatically managed using the data adapter object for us. And the connection is kept open only as long as it is required. Okay, just before it reads, executes the command, it opens the connection, executes the command, reads the data, fills the data set, and closes the connection right away. Okay, so I have the data set now. All that is left out is to use that data set as the data source for our grid, grid view control. So grid view one dot data source is equal to data set and call the data bind method. So grid view one dot data bind. All right. So now if we go ahead and run this application, you should actually see that data. As you can see, you know, the data is retrieved and displayed on the web form. All right, so we have seen how to execute a SQL statement, an inline SQL statement. And we have seen uh, using SQL command objects, we can execute, you know, using SQL command and SQL data reader, we can execute stored procedures. So is it possible to execute a stored procedure with SQL data adapter? Absolutely. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a stored procedure first. So let's say, I have this procedure, create procedure, SP, let's call SP get product inventory as the name of the stored procedure. So let's press F5, command completed successfully. 
now if we execute the stored procedure we have the result so now we want to call the stored procedure from within our uh, asp.net web application so to do that all you have to do is copy the name of the stored procedure instead of the ad hoc sql statement copy paste the name of the stored procedure and another important thing that we have to do is we have to tell the data adapter that it is executing a stored procedure now even if you don't tell that if i just run this as it is all i have done until now is instead of the inline sql statement i have copy pasted the uh, name of the stored procedure so if i run this as it is the applicant you know sql data adapter figures that it's a stored procedure executes that gets the data okay but then it's a good practice to actually specify in the code that it is executing a stored procedure and not an inline SQL statement because if you try to execute a stored procedure that has got parameters then you anyway have to specify uh, the command type as stored procedure okay so da dot select command because this is the select command remember the data adapter you know can also update data it can update insert delete it can do all DML operations okay in this session we'll only see how to select data in a later session we'll see how to update the data uh, update the database from the data set uh, using the data adapters update method okay so the data adapter dot select command the command type is actually a stored procedure okay so now if we run this we I mean the result is like would, would exactly be the same except that we are specifying the command type is stored procedure alright so we have seen how to execute a stored procedure that doesn't take parameters now let's see how to execute a stored procedure using this data adapter object that takes in a parameter now let's say I have a text box wherein the user can actually type in product ID and then let's drag and drop a text box control so a user can type in the product ID and let's say there is a button called get product okay so when he clicks that button he, he should get only that product you know for which he has entered the ID in this text box control so within the click event we want all this code so let's copy and paste that within the click event handler okay and let's write a stored procedure which takes uh, you know a product ID and then returns that product so let's call this SP get product inventory by ID and select star from TBL product inventory where product ID is equal to we need to pass in a parameter to the stored procedure so let's create that product ID integer and specify that parameter in the where clause so let's create this procedure execute that command completed successfully so the stored procedure should have been created let's quickly test this let's pass in product ID 1 press F5 okay I get the product okay so now let's try to execute the stored procedure from within our ASP.NET web application so the first thing that we have to do is copy the name of the stored procedure that we want to execute paste that here and we specify this this is actually a stored procedure using the command type property on the select command object I mean property of the data adapter object okay and the next thing is obviously you have to you know pass in a parameter to the stored procedure okay so to to create the parameter and pass in the way you do it is da dot select command dot parameters dot add so if you look at this one you can pass in a SQL parameter object we have we have learned how to you know create an instance of SQL parameter object when we are actually working with the SQL command object it's exactly the same because if you look at this select command property it actually is the select command if you look at the intelligence here it's actually a SQL command object meaning if you know how to work with SQL command object then it's pretty much easy to work with SQL data adapter object okay so SQL uh, data adapter object dot select command dot parameters dot add there is a method called add with value 
where you can just specify the name of the parameter and the value that you want to pass for that parameter. So the name of the parameter here is at product ID. So that's the name of the parameter. And the next thing that you have to pass in is the value for that parameter. So where is this value coming from? This value is coming from this text box. So let's, the ID of the text box is text box one. So text box one dot text. That's it. So we specified that it's a stored procedure. And then you associated this parameter to this procedure. That's it. So let's run this and then once we type the product ID into the text box control and click this button, we should get that specific product. Let's say I want the product with ID 2, get product, and I only get that product there. So we have seen how to execute a stored procedure with a parameter as well. Now another slightly, I mean, there is another way you can do this instead of passing to the constructor, uh, you know, here, if you look at this, the SQL data adapter is actually taking in these two parameters. Okay, now there is another version overloaded constructor of SQL adapter which doesn't take any parameters. So if I create a SQL data adapter like this, then I need to specify the adapter's select command. So data adapter dot select command. And if you remember, this select command property is actually expecting a SQL command object. So if you know how to work with SQL command object, all you do is to create a new SQL command object and then specify the command text and the connection object. So let's say the command here is SP. That's the procedure. And the connection that we want to use is the connection object. OK, so we have that SQL command here. And we are associating the command type as to, we are telling that command type is stored procedure. And to the select command, we are adding a parameter which it expects. So now if I run, the output would exactly be the same except that you know we are we are doing it in a slightly different way. So I enter product ID one, click get product and I get that. Okay. On this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.